We as a community are content. Uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, that voice is Guy Branham. I'm going to, this is the Endless Honeymoon podcast. I'm going to say that Guy may be, Laura, I'll need your, wait, Guy may be our most, is he our most guested? No. We've, he's only been on here once. That's, That's why I true. said he has to come I've been on. on once or twice. He's been on the most. Oh, twice? Twice. This is his third. Yes. That's pretty good. That means you're friend you're actually officially friend of the pod. But I would I would also just like to say on in terms of endless honeymoon, like the rarest pleasure that is possible is when you have two couples like two people in a marriage and you are friends with them equally but in different terms. And separately. Yes. yes. Okay, so if we got I like that. Split up. Whose side would you? Oh, that's done? a great I mean, question. At the end of the day, I would go with Natasha. <laughs> what guy? Even though I have, known, we have history. Even though I have known yeah. Moshe even longer. Uh, even though you, you can keep, you can keep Brent. And I'm, sh- I'm shocked. Uh, there is a cold wind blowing through my soul right I now. I love you, Moshe <laughs> Kasher, and you would, you would never be truly distant from me. But um, also, it is you are the person who has famously said, "Is there a female comic you don't like?" <laughs> <laughs> oh you! Oh you! Is there a female yes. comic? You? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're the opposite of the troll on Reddit saying women aren't funny. You're like every every woman is funny, <laughs> whether they're a comedian or not. <laughs> so you. I don't, is- I don't remotely believe that. I, I I did actually just give Natasha a book with a foreword by Christopher Hitchens, uh, uh, and I was like, <laughs> "Will she slap me? I don't know." <laughs> Hitchens, he's coming on the pod soon, and he would he would stay with me. I'll tell you that right now. Hitchens would go. Christopher with me. Hitchens, if for those of you who don't know, he was the one who famously said women aren't funny in like 2007 or something and it really you know everyone was like mad about it but you know the best thing about women aren't funny i ever read was sarah silverman they asked her in an interview maybe it was for bust magazine or something it was right when i started comedy they're like what do you think of jerry lewis he just said he had said that women aren't funny or something and she was like i don't i don't even know how coherent he is (laughs) i I don't really have an opinion on that like it was just such a great answer it's like yeah the guy's like 95 and probably a psycho alcoholic like who can you know it's like we're not going to base anything on what he said is he well and also Famously made the worst movie of all time. Also, not a <laughs> Wait, funny person. Not funny. Well, no. Well, first He's of all, the, he also made my favorite movie, which is King of Comedy. Sure, he didn't no, make that's that a good movie. Yes, that was but a his good movie. acting in that. But wait, what's the worst movie he's ever made the of all day time? The Day the Clown Died. Yeah, that's the worst movie of all time. It's apparently a, a, a light-hearted comedy about the Holocaust that you can't see. Can you see it? Is it on YouTube? I don't think so. I bet Somebody's you could buy a VHS that. on Amazon. I don't think so. It never came out, and it was scuttled. Um, do you guys know that the dialogue around women aren't funny has changed? Okay. Did you know this? <laughs> I, we've shifted the terms. See, we've shifted the terms. It's no longer that women aren't funny, but they now they only talk about sex. Oh. You know how men are famous Wait, for not pe- talking about talk sex? Wait, that's I don't talk about sex. You know how men famously on stage never, never. discuss sex or sexuality? That's our thing. Women, that is the latest dialogue is that women are, perhaps they're funny, but they can only talk about sex. Oh, wow. Like, it it is funny for me to watch, like, the eras shift and change. Like, there were the periods of time where, like, oh, no, female comics have a joke about their period Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then, like, as time goes on and you see friends who are younger and, like, aren't carrying that shit around in their head. I, there was one time I saw Emily Heller do, like, a great 10 minutes that were, like, all topics that had been, like, Ugh, I'm so tired of women talking about uh-huh. that. And it was fucking Emily Heller, so it was great. And I was just like, she doesn't give two shits about what those people think. This is wonderful. Yeah, I just feel like I hate all police. Yes. It, listen, all all cab applies beyond actual police What's departments. What's cab? All cops are bastards. Oh. Comedy police, they're bastards too. Every police, all every thought police, I don't want anything to do oh, with. Okay, but what about Sting and the police? Now, Sting and the police, they are, I, ha, I you know, I met Sting. Really? I met Sting and he is the of among the top 1% of nicest mega celebrities I've ever met. Remember when him and Trudy Styler were telling everyone that they do a lot of... Um, <laughs> What's the sex they were Tantra. doing? Tantric. Tantric sex. What are you, an observational comic from 1989 <laughs> over No, here? I'm just saying I remember because I was like interning in New York at the Wooster Group and I had to like invite Trudy Styler to Willem Dafoe's like dinner party and all I could think about was like that like that they're all like into tantric sex her hour long multiple orgasm. I don't know. Like, it, like why put that out there? Why tell people that? Uh, well, I... I Oh, and also, I do not like the police. Having oh, and so I think Sting's solo really? career. Well, it's fine, but yes. it doesn't make up for the atrocity that is Sting's solo career. <laughs> oh, you're saying you don't like 
stings Solo Career so much that you retroactively dislike the police? Exactly. That's really because there was like all of a sudden it was like this new age feel to it, and I was like, oh, I don't. It was like very adult contemporary. But, Am okay. I wrong? Um, okay, I never listened to it. I hate anything that smacks of adult contemporary, except for like the stuff from like the juicy eighties when Fleetwood Mac was having sex with everyone. That mm-hmm. adult oh, con- I could listen to her, you know, yes. doing anything. Um, but I do really respect the celebrities who have pushed past doing work and making art and just have four things about their identity, and that's how they make a living. Oh and I yeah. Think- <laughs> That Trudy and Sting, that was really smart. Mm. Um, Wait, so what? What's the brand? What's the thing they got from that? Come, their brand. <laughs> Do is they come. have a lube or something? I mean, they were in, they were they, <laughs> Sting lube. They, they were in the conversation. We yeah. understood. Oh, we want to talk about tantra first. Let's go to Trudy. I'm gonna go further. I'm gonna say mm. we engage in tantric sex was the sex tape of its day. Uh huh. All you had to do was right. have a salacious rumor. You didn't yeah. actually have to videotape yourself totally. sucking cock. You could just say, I like sex, and people would talk for two years. And he was such a sex symbol, it was good for her, because she wasn't that hot. But then it's like, mm. oh, she's like sexually open. Also, Trudy, I don't know if she has an art or a business of her own, but I fucking know her name mm-hmm. because of discourse around Sting and Trudy having sex. Now, Guy, you're a big thinker. What have you been uh, What have you been thinking about lately? What's been on your mind? And by big thinker, we mean you're the smartest person we know. That is, I would say you're in the, you are, you are in, remember I said Sting is in the 1% kindest celebrity sighting? Yes. I would say you're in the 1% smartest people I know category. That is so kind. Um, and uh, I, I think that maybe that puts you in the one percent of kindest people I know. Oh, I was—I thought you were going to say, but not the smartest. I know. <laughs> I was expecting. You know, you're, oh. you're in that one percent too. I didn't get there, but yeah. No, Moshe's uh, smart. He's just in like the f- top five. Percent. Moshe is really, really smart. <laughs> what? I'm in like seven or eight percent. Yeah. You're yeah. higher than me. You're in seven or eight percent when you're on. You guys have both written very good books, Thank and you. you're so have you. Both very natty dressers in very different ways. Thank you, thank you, guy. Yeah, what's on your mind, guy? What's been? What have you been thinking about? I'm trying to replace having to do the hard work of comedy with just having three to five aspects of your identity. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> what would yours be? I've been doing a lot of... <laughs> I'm doing a lot of... Wait, com- I don't have to go up if I if I figure this out? If you yes. get in the news cycle for something really interesting, you could do four or five years of your career just being that yes. person. <laughs> um, like, we're watching it happen to so many people around us right Wait, now. Wait, give me yeah, some give us tips. Give an inflection point. Oh, I can't because all of them are too politicized. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, I see. but what? Okay, so okay. you're saying uh, you're saying like having something that you stand behind that's your identity, so, right? Yes, or and just, then also a brand. Like I mean, I'm gonna like, like, like Whitney Cummings was here, and I was like, oh, maybe we should start making our own vinegar. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, there are those there are those two writer girls who now have a tinned fish company. You know the goopification of like mm. Gwyneth mm-hmm. doesn't have to to make a movie; she just is goop now. And, yeah, uh, Cameron Diaz shilling that wine. But listen, we're talking about two different phenomena at, at, at once. One is that um, people are no longer timid about making their personal brand into a literal brand, yes. right? Hi, my name is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Please try my cat food. Right. Uh, and, and which is, we all is agree. Is he literally brilliant. doing a cat no, food? No, but I, it, it doesn't but it feel like so it would make believe. He eats so much cod. Yeah. <laughs> He famously eats like uh, two pounds of cod a day. Yeah, if you like Dwayne The Rock Johnson's cod content, yes. you're going to love it for your little so feline friend. I am doing a lot of consuming uh, red purple pigments. Mm. To try, I see from your drink. Yes, to try to increase um, my HDL. And I'm like, what if I let this replace my personality? What if instead of being interesting and having thoughts about things, I'm always just like, berries are powerful. You are the HDL king of comedy, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, that right now my HDL is very low. I I'm have sorry. To, what is HDL? That's good cholesterol. Oh. And red pigment helps with that. Yes, my my. So you could be the ugh. cholesterol comic. Nightshades. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Yes, just saying nightshades. Yeah, saying it, the word nightshades. I'm an ally. Goes such a long way towards like establishing yourself in this world. I get it. Right. <laughs> like Giselle and to- Tony. What's his name? <laughs> Who was Giselle's husband? A football player? Oh. A football player. Oh, I don't on. know. He, they didn't eat nightshades. You don't know either. Uh, that's what I'm saying. No one here knows. This, we're <laughs> not the right Super group. Super famous. Laurie, you Ta- know. Oh, Tom Brady. Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. Yes, Tony, Brady. Tony Brady. Tony Brady. Tony <laughs> Brady. 
<laughs> Wait, why didn't they famously didn't eat nightshades? Because nightshades are full of poison. They're uh-huh. poisonous for you. Oh, the, and that was like their personality, and yeah. then they could get articles so Tom, written about so them. Wait, okay, so Tom oh Brady. Oh my God, this sounds awesome. Tom Brady retired from football and thought, what am I going to do? <laughs> I know, I won't eat nightshades. Right. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. I do think particularly saying, like, what I'm trying to do, at the end of the day, I'm a fat person, so I can't be aspirational. So I have to be like, oh, <laughs> the red, red purple pigments will make you better. But like you guys, and it, as an attractive couple, you should just say that something most people enjoy is deadly poisonous okay, to you, that's a good and idea. you're avoiding Wait, it. Whitney was just on our podcast, and she said she's told me you can't use ear airbud AirPods. Great, great. She also AirPods. said um, we're earbuds. Anti- no earbuds. Yeah, we're anti AirPod. Yeah. And then she also said that um, uh, stretch pants give you cancer. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. I got it. Yeah, I got it. So we got to we have to have a hot. A hot enough take. A hot take that's kind of crazy. A hot enough take to skate through our irrelevant years. Yes. <laughs> what I yeah. and then you can have a, a great fun comeback as an older actor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, a Lily Tomlin yeah. like a Jane Fonda thing. But before that, Jane Fonda is the ultimate example. Yes. Yes. Oh no no you know who's the ultimate example is the woman who just died who was doing Thigh Master. Oh, Suzanne, Suzanne Summers. Summers. Yes, like no, yeah. but something. Jane Fonda even more so because she had she had two iterations. Yes, Jane Fonda. The, she, she was Jane Fonda the 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 actress. Then she was Jane Fonda the aerobics. Then she was Jane Fonda the communist. Yes, and then she doubled back and now is Jane Fonda the actress right, again. Right now, and, there we go. And I mean, so quickly from her second Academy Award to I am going to go on Donahue, your favorite show. I love it. Uh, and do crunches. Yeah. Is, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have to say one thing. My first time ever on camera was on Donahue. What? Is that I right? Was, I, was, I mean, I, a classically Chicago show. Yeah, that's so I true. got so dressed up. I wore like, my hair was dyed red. I was like, I put like weird pigtails. Like I was really goth and like, they did like a close up on me and I saved it and I was like always sending it to people. I was like so What proud. was the episode? I don't even remember. I just wanted to have my face on a camera. Yeah. I, we didn't have like phones or anything. I contacted Phil Donahue when Problematic was coming out because I uh-huh. wanted to talk to him and he never got back to me. And I go, Phil Donahue's too busy to talk? Is it possible that Phil Donahue can They're make- so rich. Yeah. Like that's at the so end true. of the day, they have all of Danny Thomas's money mm. and they are so fucking From rich. From Marlo Thomas's wife. Yeah. They're just okay. out there spending money. Yes. Like mm. I I just remember in the late 80s there was some story of she's buying right after Danny Thomas uh, died, she was buying every house around hers so that she could just expand her property. And I'm oh, like that's probably what they're still doing. That kind of wealth. I remember I was once at a at a couple's house they will remain anonymous, but you know who they are and I'll tell you off camera. And it was the most ornate house I've ever been to. In my life, yes, and we were taking a walk of the grounds, and they and it was a very fancy neighborhood. And then they pointed to this other mansion, and they say, "We just bought that." I go, "That's beautiful to um, to rent out or to." As ha- Moshe, he's like to Airbnb to to, to, <laughs> to, to rent out to uh, have your in laws live, and they say. No, we just didn't want neighbors. I'm like, <laughs> that is wealth that I am That's not. That's wonderful. Wait, I have a question, though, about what you're talking about, Guy, because, like, right now I'm finding myself at this stage where, like, for the next 10 years, I would like to, like, I like now, you know, like, Julie Louise Dreyfus, like, all these people, they become, they become, like, um, sitcom, like, multicam stars yes. because they're trying to raise their kids and they don't want to, like, go to Atlanta. Yeah. Like, if you're not a monster and you want to be around your child in L.A., you kind of can't do work out of town, but this sounds right up my alley. Julia Louis Dreyfus is the best example of this situation. First of all, let's just begin by saying a start billion, out a billionaire, a billionaire's child, one hundred percent. That really helps. Like French grade training stock, but yeah. so talented, so, the most talented. And also, the thing is, is the whole way she's been so good on so many shows, like. Old Christine. That was that's the one I'm talking about. We don't even talk about whatever the Ellie one was that her husband created. But the whole time, she and Brad Hall had their very environmental house. So that mm-hmm. if at any point in time a show wasn't happening, they could be like, come do a piece about our extremely environmental house. No, and their environmental but, house is in Santa Barbara and it actually has like the whole roof of the house like is a remote. Have you been there? <laughs> no, I've read articles yes. on it. Listen, do the, not enough credit is given to the f- the profound leg up creatively that artists can get 
if they are born into obscene wealth. There's a lot of hay made about Nepo babies. Yes. But Nepo babies are... Our baby's a Nepo baby and she's got like $20,000. Nepo babies are better than non-Nepo babies because they're not dealing with class warfare and economic strife and trying to get macaroni and cheese. They're like living in their manor and having the dramaturg person come to them. And the fencing class begins at three. Yeah, it's no wonder that Julia Louis-Dreyfus is one of the great comedic actresses of our time. She had a lot of time to work on it. No. I mean, and he's always... It's talent. Like, but the talent thing, is helped along by not being desperate. No, I know talented people whose parents are extremely famous who have like portrait lessons and all of the stuff well, and they're still not good. Always the great thing of, I'm pretty sure she has a sister who is also an actor. <laughs> and no. It, okay. But, You're throwing stones at my theory here, right? No, no, but there's also just... <laughs> the thing is, is however much you want to hate Nepo babies, it's like fucking Liza. What are you going to do? Yep. Nora Ephron. Yep. Like, who was Nora uh, Ephron's mom? Uh, both of her parents were screenwriters. They wrote, there's a movie from the 50s that is making fun of her. Um, it's making fun of their kid? Yeah, it's called Take Her, She's Mine. <laughs> and it's... Um, <laughs> Wait, like, I want to watch that. It's about their daughter, and she's just started at Wellesley or some women's college, and she comes back full of notions. And her parents are like, ugh. Do like, you know who Nora Ephron's, what Nora Ephron's son does for a living? They're like around. Those sons are, oh, and one made the documentary, but is it somebody around our world? It is someone who plays guitar for the most significant and creatively profound artist of our time the voice of a generation the voice of white women everywhere none other than her majesty tay tay swiffy oh really the lead guitarist for, and i might have to cut this out of the podcast but the lead guitarist why would you have to cut that out i don't know maybe he doesn't want the association but the lead because he's a friend of mine the lead guitarist for taylor swift's a billion dollar tour and for many tours since uh, before that is Nora Ephron's son. I bet you Taylor pays them $300,000 a year. I bet you Taylor pays them even better than that. You think? Taylor Swift famously. Uh, no, she gave the people, she like did a big display again uh, saying that she was paying the roadies like this like amount of money. Exactly. Right while like peak, you know, people were like, oh, I just peak did. selfishness. Where pe- I, like five people came up to me and said that they've just spent their whole life savings on Taylor Swift tickets. And then yeah. she she must have heard that that was rumbling. So she gave this like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the guys who like load up the equipment Bonus to the and everyone. And then people would call in our podcast and say, I just want to say I love how she treats her staff. I know they're calling to leave a secret that they don't like Taylor Swift, but they like genuflected to the ring like nine <laughs> times in the secret. Um I just want to know what consultancy is she consulting with? Like, it, she is, what a business plan on that woman. I mean, there well, it has is, to do with your parents, right? Because her parents got her into it and they were the managers. So I'm sure that helps. No, and like her dad was a finance guy. And there it, it goes back to Moshe's point of like, what a clean path for those people who don't ever have to figure out how they're going to pay their rent. I just think it's interesting that... She just t- has so much soul. Uh, there is that. <laughs> There is that. She's got a great amount of soul. It is interesting to me, because I've been thinking about subculture a lot, obviously, because my book is coming out, and it's all about subculture, that the internetification of society has has become so full bore that you can think you are in a cool subculture while Mm. listening to the... B- by far most popular musician yeah. in th- the world. Oh, and you think you're in a subculture. You like think yeah. you're in a cool subculture, right. but you're listening to Michael Jackson, yeah. actually. Like, you're not. This is mass culture. This because is, you can find people on Reddit, on anywhere, like, talking it's about a it in these it's corners. More, it's more than a... Uh, uh, she's more than an artist. She's an identity. Like, I remember when I was little, I would, like, have a... like. I, I'm, I'm probably older than both of you, but I remember I had like a radio. What? I would put a it what? under my bed and hear doctor. Telegram? No, it was like a radio. It was like a radio. I like I don't even. Or it must have been a Walkman with a radio. Sure. So it had a tape player and then the radio, and then I would listen to Doctor Demento. Yeah. On really. the bus or under my under my bed, and it would be like all of these like you know subversive comedy dark songs and I had never heard and I was probably like you know 12 and I had never heard anything like that but like I felt like I was part of this crazy subculture but you're saying now you can like the most popular thing in history and still feel that and feel like you're in That's again so against the grain thing and also mm. back then I'm definite that I'm older than you but also like um, you had to like battle for years to find other people who would know mm-hmm. anything about that and especially yes. a non-coastal because we're like yes. 
in the middle of a you know state. And well, the, he was coastal, but he was not he not might coastal. as well not have yes, been coastal. Yes, <laughs> but like you now, there's just so much access to everything that it is like, where's the work involved? Who ever gets to actually feel alienated? And it's weird because they all love to talk about how alienated they I, are. I know they're more alienated than ever. And, you know, it's because the work of being young used to be uh, the hero's journey of finding your people. Yeah. And now the people are in your pocket. Yeah. You just open up TikTok and everybody's got the same people. It's all the same people. And the and your sub your subculture doesn't exist because there is only there is only one culture and it is it is the mono culture. And I think subculture doesn't matter anymore. Really, the only thing that could matter that could make a difference is talking about the income disparity. Oh, for nobody fuck's wants to, get to talk about it. That. No, the I, billionaires like the, uh, we've already been through music. The seventies were the best. Like uh, the, c- comedy's over. Like uh, what's next? Like, like it's just. I do think there is this way that like. America makes us all so invested in the idea of wealth that you just can't get away from it. And like people, you know, there was this like gay socialist on, um, on Twitter who was posting underwear photos of himself. And it is like, yes, it's all socialist down to the pair of Calvin Klein's, which, you know, once you get to the (laughs) underwear, they have to be like upscale consumerist underwear because we need to know that you are at the end of the day worried about being a hot guy more than anything else. Yeah. Where are your socialist (laughs) underpants? That's what I'd like to see. Let's see your gulag draws. The thing is, is like, what, what, what was Gandhi telling us to do other than make our own underwear? Well, Gandhi also kind of convinced people to like be, have nine, Nonviolence. Yes. And that didn't work that well for Jewish people either. What? What? Please, Natasha, where did that come from? I'm just Qu- saying. Quick, uh, so, so we have a caller on the line. Uh, n- guy, I don't know if you know this, but we're, we do an advice po- podcast yes. here. Yes. Um, well, ha- okay, have we come to the end of our thoughts? Wait, hold on. I do want to ask Guy, do you spend time on TikTok? Because you're an intelligent person. You must feel it eating away, rotting away at your brain. So I you must say no. Uh, uh, yes, I, wa- I I spent most of yesterday trying to figure out how to properly edit a joke mm-hmm. video to put on TikTok so I could compete with the young people. And it really, uh, oh, what it, a world. it broke my mind. Do you enjoy it? Um, There are things about it that are really cute. And then there are things about it that are so horrifying um that is is rough my niece used to just be she's 22 and she was very much like i'm not giving my information to china and like refused to engage with it and i really respected that is she still doing that no now she's on tiktok (laughs) damn it what was her breaking point is she a swifty no not at all she has much dorkier and weirder taste in music than that now that i like listen there is the positive about social media and internet monoculture which is that weirdos have a which is that weirdos have a much lower bar to entry to finding other weirdos. Yes. You know, if you were a weird gay goth kid in Peoria, it would take, you would have to move. Yeah. You know, to find your people. But now you can literally just open your phone and go, I have people everywhere. I am not alone. No, that's why the worst are like the hot gay dentists from like uh, Cincinnati. Sure. Who like get to lead their hot gay dentist life and then know all the hot people and then just spend most of the year like going to uh, Rio or Puerto Vallarta. (laughs) To the hot gay dentist. Rio sucks. I'm sorry. Have you been? Yeah. You've been to Rio de Janeiro? Uh Uh-huh. When? Why did you think Rio sucks? Oh, I it was just it just was like too big of a city. For oh, me. really? Are you talking about the Rio on the Las Vegas Strip, the Rio Hotel? <laughs> Moshe, I didn't know you've been to Brazil. This is breaking news. Okay, listen, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you too. And I see you. I see you. And uh, the billionaires could help us get out of global warming. I'm just saying. <laughs> um. Wait, well. Well. We've gotten, I think, taking all the money and making everyone really fucked up, right? Like that, that, that just seems to be like the one thing that could help things. And that's is the, what is like talking about people who are like, why, like Dr. Bronner is like, why is the CEO making so much money? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. I think we need more movies where superheroes don't save us and more movies where groups of non super people get together and kill a superhero. <laughs> Ooh, that oh, would be I like cool. that. Like mm. I just Let's write that movie. I just feel like we we too much are telling the story. Like the story ha- Yeah, Marvel, like get a life. It has to Marvel s- get a life, she says. <laughs> the, the story <laughs> has to center Truly, I stand Zuckerberg. It. it has to center Elon and we cannot understand you, that those people are the That's villain. nice of you to call him Elon. I see what you're saying. You're saying that the mythology we are creating through our movies 
uh, is literal mm. hero worship, and we mm. keep waiting for a big, a big strong rich man to come solve our problems. Yes. Mm. When in fact our problems will be solved by killing a few big strong rich men. Yes, I, probably at this at this terrible point in time, killing wasn't the best word, but just depriving them of their superness. Listen, I'm all for the uh, and work- stop buying their cars. I'm all for the workers' <clears throat> revolt, and I but I want it to stop at a very specific income bracket. <laughs> Okay, you behead you behead the billionaires. Okay, but don't come after the podcasters. Okay, that's all I'm saying. All right. Listen, no, but here's the thing, and I'll just say this: it's because like for people who are normal, you're like you're trying to wrap your mind around it. You're like, why does anyone? Why does anyone need this much money? And then you read a few biographies of these people, and it's like, oh, they are in a fast race to be a trillionaire. So they're all competing against each other to be the next trillionaire and at, at everyone's expense. And we're all just like casualties. Do you know so how long it would take? To that ca- shouldn't be allowed. To count from one to a trillion. <laughs> it would take longer than. Oh, actually, let's find out. Hold no, on. Moshe, let's not. It's Why? going to take fun- like too long for all any right. of us to be alive. Okay. Well, I mean, I didn't cut you off when you said uh, Marvel. I mean, Marvel movies get a life. Rio de <laughs> no, Janeiro Marvel, is a terrible get city. A life. Marvel, Marvel get, get a life. Marvel get a life. Um, guy, we've got some callers on the line. Wonderful. They are populists. They are not nepo babies. Oh wait, I want this. They is might a, be nepo babies. Here's here's a little piece of movie trivia before we move on. Uh, speaking of nepo babies being talented, I was watching the seminal film directed by Joel Schumacher last night. Do you know who Joel Schum- Schumacher is? I auditioned for uh, him when I was young. He he's uh, one of our great gays. Yes. He's perhaps the greatest gay yes. because famous for sleeping with, do you know the answer to this? No. 20,000 people. Jesus <gasps> Christ. And when said that was Whoa, impressive, he Now said, I feel bad also, when I met him, he didn't want to give me the part. Well, it, 20, I was 000, 14 though. 20,000 men. He said Oh, he's gay. <laughs> he said when pressed uh, about how impressive that was, it's not that impressive. I'm gay. It was just available. Uh, <laughs> well, also, he was doing that at one of the most dangerous times to be sleeping with 20,000 yes, people. Yes. So I watched his film Falling Down last night. Oh, oh that's great Joel movie. Um, yeah. Uh, Michael Douglas. And there is a great scene in a whammy burger. And there's this really great little character actress in it. And I said, This girl is so funny. Who is she? And it was. Michelle Pfeiffer's sister. Oh, Dee Dee Pfeiffer is so talented. Really though. good. She had a couple what of sitcoms. To her? She had a couple of sitcoms and then she went away. Straight so up. maybe good. Nepo Baby is like, you know what? You got it. You got it. It's like, what can you do if you, you got it? Yeah. You got to be kidding me. That's what I always say. All right, Listen. we got a caller on the line. Hold on. As my friend Howard Kramer said, well, he didn't say this. He said he was quoting Cardi B. They gotta love you, babe. They gotta love you, babe. They and really you know do. what? They love and, you. And they love. And they love you. And they love Gwyneth. And they love Goop. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know what bugs my butt about some of these meal plans? What's that then? Is that you get this big ass package of stuff and then you got to prepare it and it takes you 45 minutes and it's kind of like, yeah, I didn't have to shop for it, but I did have to do some knives up Gordon Ramsay stuff. No more of that. Thanks to Factor Meals. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal service and can help you eat well for breakfast. They have breakfast lunch and dinner with chef prepared dietitian yes. approved yes. ready to eat yes. meals delivered straight to your door do you know what i do Mosh? what do you do i don't eat till 3 30. that's not healthy but i know what but is i don't want to make food what is healthy is factors fresh never frozen meals delivered to your door and they're ready in two minutes that's that's the time turnaround that I need. Especially I'll, with our kid. Kids eat dinner every night. It's so annoying. Now, they used to have this, and it was called TV dinners. But guess what? They were gross and terrible for you. But Factor has all these different options you can choose from, like Calorie Smart, Vegan and Veggie, Protein Plus, and a bunch of more wholesome options. And best thing, they're delicious. Factor isn't just for dinner either. You can count on extra convenience any time of day with an assortment of 55 and more add-ons. To suit various preferences and tastes. You know how annoying everybody is with their dumb diets? You can choose from quick breakfast items, lunch to go, grab and go snacks, and ready to drink cold pressed juices, shakes, and what our daughter loves, smoothies. And are you asking if it's sustainable? Well, it is sustainable. Those TV dinners are not sustainable. You they know that. They certainly are not. Stofers, we're talking to you. But with Factor, we they offset 100% of their delivery emissions and source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices. This December, you can get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door, ready in just 
two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash honeymoon50 and use the code honeymoon50 to get 50% off, 50%. That's code honeymoon50 at factormeals.com slash honeymoon50 to get 50% off. It's a great gift this holiday season. Hey, Tosh. Yamosh. This holiday season, do you have a titty-based gift suggestion? You know, my favorite bra, the bras that got me back into braing, is Honey Love. I love a Honey Love. Why do you like them so much? Well, listen, they give the support and lift of underwire without that feeling. And they're made with such lightweight material, you don't even realize you have it on. That is a beautiful thing. They look good on you. They support you. They don't have that underwire feeling. Give the gift of comfort this holiday season. Just go to honeylove.com slash honeymoon and you'll treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 20% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash honeymoon. I love their shapewear. It uses targeted compression technology so you can wear effective shapewear without feeling like you're suffocating. You'll immediately feel the difference. Honeylove.com slash honeymoon has a 20% off this month only and after you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Go ahead and tell them. It was, it was the Endless Honeymoon podcast. It's time to ditch the underwire for good, thanks to Honey Love. That's honeylove.com slash honeymoon. All right, here we go. We're going to call. Heidi in Madison. Oh, we got to help her get out. No, Madison's good. What's up, Heidi? Can you see her? <laughs> oh, hey. Hi, Heidi. How you doing? You want a little bit of Endless Honeymoon podcast trivia? Yes, I do. That's exactly what I wanted. Your name is the name. Of the dog of toxic producer Laura. Ooh. <laughs> Just I so do have know. a dog name. Sometimes a dog face in the morning. No, too. no, no. Wait, no, Heidi, no. so you're here with me, Moshe, and our friend Guy Branham. How are you? Yay. Hi, Moshe. Hi. Dog, dog. How are you doing there? <laughs> and uh, we'd love to know what's going on with you in Madison. Well, let me tell you. So my best friend of 23 years, like my die ride girl, her four-year-old daughter hates me. <laughs> and at first, like when she was two and a toddler, I was like, ah, she's going to grow out of this. And her mom would always kind of push us to like, like each other. Like she would tell her daughter like, oh, there's Auntie Heidi, give her a hug. You know, and I'd reach my arms out and she would like shrug her shoulder or turn her back. And then, you know, her mom would make her share her her like blueberries with me. And she would always just disgustingly be like cry about it. Mm. Once her mom, we were in a parking lot crossing and her mom's like, grab Heidi's hand. She swatted my hand Oof. like Melania Trump to like swatted it. And her sure. mom didn't. Um, and then the the irony is she's loves she adores my husband um, <laughs> who is very introvert um, doesn't try to get her attention and which probably is the problem why you know why she doesn't like oh. me because I'm always trying to get her to like me um, I, I already have your answer I have your answer too I wonder if it's the same answer should we go with guy first to okay, see guy you go first what or, do you think, or I can go first Okay, uh, me, like, I'm, I'll, I'll I, tell you. I'll, I'll tell you if you got the same as me. Um, my nanny. I literally on the second day she worked for my daughter. My daughter did not like her. I saw her squirting ready whip into her mouth, <laughs> <laughs> and she just like is always giving her like cookies, candy, chocolates. It's like, and the and the my daughter like, and I'm not saying that's why my kid loves her. But it's like a nice ease into it. You're mm. like, hey, I'm the candy person. My Nana was the same way. She will give me those Lorna Dunes. Remember those cookies? They're like like a stick of butter. Like It was just like, oh, we can like eat a sleeve of Lorna Dunes if we go to Nana's house. That's not what I was going to say. Oh, okay. I you, just think you just need to like up the sugar. Like It's it's lame, but you know. Oh, I've tried. Oh, really? I've, tried. I've given her candy. I've given her mm. fresh tortillas, which she loves. No, no, I've not fresh tortillas. <laughs> no. she, I'm talking about ready whip, cheese, whip, like, you know, something like. Uh, oh, I, 
I brought around my six-year-old niece who's really fun and playful. And so then her daughter started to warm up to me because I brought this fun kid because I don't have kids. And so then I thought we were on, I was like, she likes me now because my niece is hugging, loving me, but the worst is yet to come, you guys. Last month, I was at a coffee shop with her and her mom, and she points to a a bucket of mop water and she's like mom what's that and her mom's like that's yucky dirty gross mop water out of nowhere she goes it would be funny if Heidi drank it and died she looks at me she looks at me with no expression and she goes I want you to die then, so then I'm like, I, I'm going to be mom, honest with you. I didn't okay, see maybe this the ready whip wasn't a good I, idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know that's why I was just like, oh, wait, oh, wait, it gets there. So then I'm sitting there like, okay, her mom's going to swoop in and reprimand because when I hang out with other people's kids, I'm like, oh, I don't have kids because I don't want to parent. So I expect them to parent and discipline. So, so then in a panic because I got nervous. Like she was just like stone cold killer. And I was like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I'm gonna die. I'm definitely gonna die. We're all gonna die. I just hope it's not on your terms. Then her her mom awkwardly was like, you know, you shouldn't say stuff like that because some people's feelings could get hurt. But didn't didn't address that like the person sitting there's feelings were hurt, nor did she like reprimand her for saying That's- so then. The next, that night, I was a little overwhelmed with emotion. I texted her and I said, hey, to my friend, I'm like, great to see you. Just so you know, it's a little jarring and intense to hear your daughter say, I want you to die. Why do you think she said that? And in my mind, I'm like, I think she's jealous of our friendship. And so my friend was like, oh, yeah, she's been saying weird things lately. I'm going to circle back with her tonight. She's really receptive and we'll have a conversation. And I have not got an apology yet. Mm, 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 mm. Guy. And how many times have you hung out? Have you hung out with them without getting the apology? No. So this is where the plot. So I haven't seen them yet. I was supposed to see her and supposed to see them this afternoon. And it would have been the first time since the I, I want you to die incident. Um, but we haven't. It's it's being postponed. And I honestly don't even know if I want to see her. Well, to be uh, to be fair to them, she's probably sharpening her machete right now. Like she doesn't have time to hang out. Yeah. She's ready. And guess what she dressed as Halloween as? You, let me guess. Your executioner? Close. <laughs> Ursula from Little Mermaid. <laughs> and I, at first, I was like, it's so cute that she loves the underdog. And I'm like, wait, no. Sebastian's the underdog. Ursula's the villain the villain who wants to kill you. All right. What do you got, yeah. guy? First of all, mad respect to this little girl. I know. Like, <laughs> she seems awesome. She is playing a hard game. <laughs> At the end of the day, Heidi, it just comes down to like, you're, you're right. She is jealous that her mom, when she, you guys get to hang out, pay so much attention to you. She's, is she an only child? Yes. Like she's very used to having the attention. Mm. And I think, you know, and the worst thing you can do in that situation is to try to like cajole the kid to pay attention to you. I think it's a, a rough way to go. It makes it like eating your vegetables. Here is my advice. I would say when you brought the six year old cool girl, that was a smart move. I th- think when you hang around with them, you should not try to engage with her, not try to be friends mm. with her, but you should get a poly pocket of your own, like a mm-hmm. little poly pocket mm-hmm. play set. And you should periodically pull it out, play with it. There's going to come a point in time when she's like, what's that? And you're like, Oh, that's my poly pocket. And then you put it away. And <laughs> you know, just like, I like this. let her see you being cool. And then, you know, maybe you tell yep. her something about it when she expresses interests. Um, but just sort of show that the two of you uh, both have shared interests. And also, like, I wouldn't be waiting around for that apology mm-hmm. because she's a little person who is figuring out her world and she's not going to, she's going to make bad choices. And it might be that her mom's, like, parenting journey with her is not about the apology right now. But, like, let that go. This is mm-hmm. your... But about cognitive behavioral therapy <laughs> This is your dear friend's child. You guys need to find a path to really love each other. And I think um, being protective and a little high-handed with a poly pocket of your own is a great start. Guy is basically suggesting that you play hard to get with this four-year-old. Yes. No, but also... 
got advice too. I got advice from both my sisters who have kids. But can can I add to his advice? Because I think you there's like three things you should do. You should do that and then simultaneously care about 70% less whatever that girl says to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's four. Like our daughter yesterday, we went to the pound. She picked out this dog. And then as soon as we got home, we were like all worried about the dog. And she, cause just to foster, we're not keeping the dog. And then she that was, was a like... Big- a crazy psychotic breaking news <laughs> from Natasha just throwing it out there well you know i just want to explain it's applicable it. here but i it just are right now our listeners are freaking the fuck out listen i'm i'm fostering some dogs right now some dogs <clears throat> but my, I, the point is my daughter loved it i was like two thumbs up at the pound she's like yeah you know she was like showing me two thumbs up as soon as we got home and the energy all, she's an only child shifted towards the dog and its needs from being like a traumatized dog she was like nah this dog's not for me i'm not getting any attention i don't like it like she literally said that she's a fucking psychopath no she's last five time, last time i came here i like tried to engage i was getting nothing and then i sat down to pay attention to natasha and then she sat down and started performatively coloring in front of us yeah right. like she was like wanting her to hit right. yeah. see and so the point is is I, I just think you need to care 70 percent less what the kid thinks have you tried <clears throat> hitting the child I, you and, know, and it, don't let her hurt your feelings exactly. But do I do I I want to sort of approach the mom, my friend. No, like, no, 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 no. Let's let's uh, everybody's kind of saying a version of the same thing. I mean, if okay. the, oh, sorry, honey, if this is a sincere question, which I think that it is, you are on absolute tilt with the with tr- you're like thirsty for this little like f- at this point twelve IQ ingrate. <laughs> You know, you're trying to like, what do I do to get her to like Is me? Is she crazy? <laughs> how do She's I? She's a psychopath. How she do, wants me dead. How, oh, sh- I was so disturbed that this little child that doesn't know how to read a Berenstain Bears book said she wanted my death. Uh, who? I, when will she apologize? It's like, you're an adult. And you just got to start literally ignoring this child. Like, okay, I like, guys is a little softer. You ignore her with treats, right? You bring your own little treats. And when she comes to you, you look at her and you go, yeah, it's my Polly Pocket. But you don't even need to do that. You could start ignoring the child because the child is not who you have a relationship with. It's her, it's her mom. You could literally just start going like, hello, Ingrid, or whatever her name is. And then focus on some adult shit right now but be nice and like test yeah i'm not saying be a be a jerk i'm just saying stop okay it's like this you have you ever had a guy hit on you that you were like really not into that then uh that then when you didn't uh, uh respond positively to his flirtation he like doubled and tripled down on trying to get with you was that a kind of a turn on for you Oh. No, that's you right now. You're that dude. You're the dude who's like, if you didn't want me, my offer for a drink, how, how about I bring you five drinks? Like, just right now, she knows kids at this age are so uh, savvy and, manipula- and manipulating. She knows yeah. you want her to love you. She knows that you know she doesn't like you. You're probably right that the, that the source of it is that she's jealous of your relationship with her mom. But she knows that you are desperate to get her to like you. And so she says things oh. like, I want you to die because it'll be really funny to watch you squirm if you change the whole dynamic where you don't want anything from her anymore then she's going to come to you and say you know can, uh yo quiero tortilla <laughs> <laughs> also whatever you do regardless of the path you take when she is 11 she'll be like oh i love aunt heidi that aunt is Heidi's so true always been around that is so true and guys. keep that in your mind if it's really important to you and also it's fucking cool to be ursula like yeah. i never heard of that I'm, i know I, th- I thought it was too and then when she made that comment i was like aha serial killer in but the no, I, no i think guys right and, and you need to really let go of that need to be apologized i for. had a kid like this in my life by the way you did my friend's kid i just thought he didn't like me and it, he was really rude and it really bothered me. And it now in retrospect, he's 20 and thinks I'm like really cool because I'm a comedian. And he always he's it's all 100 percent what you said, guy. He's just like thinks I'm like awesome. And also I realize I was being a fucking idiot at that age where I was going to his dad like, what's up with your son? Like he's rude <laughs> to me. And he's like, he'd be like, he's three. It's like, yeah, but you should check his ass. It's like because n- you don't have kids. So you're yeah. like wanting everyone to relate to you. Like until kids are like seven or eight. They really aren't even in their heads at all. 
They're just like in their bodies. They're in their instincts. They're like stomach, you know, like it's like, I, I, I yeah, you just have to let go of that. You could take a bucket of um, mop water to her house one night. Oh, offer to offer to wash her. And then start to really triangulate like a kind of pattern of evil where you do the bo- mop bucket and, and, and you say, hey, remember this? You mop the house with her. And they say, hey, remember, this is the bucket of mop water you wanted me to drink and die. Guess what? Yeah. Why don't we drink it together? And then and then force her to drink a little bit of it and then kind of do like a drowning kind of waterboarding situation. <laughs> it won't make yep. her like you, but it will make her respect you. <laughs> All right, Heidi. Well, I think we've helped you. Water. Oh, so it, it, it's become an inside joke now in, in our house with my husband. He'll just be like, oh, see that guy over there? He needs to drink some, wa- mop, some water. mop water. I mean, the thing is, you've got in your house an exact an exact roadmap of what to do. Yes. Be your husband. Be like, oh, I don't care. That's a four-year-old. I don't want that four-year-old to talk to me because I'm an adult and I don't really like conversations with four-year-olds. Good yeah, luck. and just and, and, and also try to do what you do without having what how how it's how it's reacted to affect you. Yeah. Smart. So if you yeah. come up with something that you want to give her, don't not give it to her, you know, and don't, don't not buy it or don't not say it. You're basically saying like, bring her a gift. And if she spurns it, treat the situation like she's say a four year old. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if she spurns her Just gift. Don't let her affect yeah. you. Yeah. The one thing that it just is annoying that the mom, her, she just doesn't see it. She's like oblivious to how much she's just resisting. But me. you know what? And You're she might be like, and I'm always like, no. But but like having the mom be oblivious, like it is. There's so much mental calculus and uh, m- mental overload. Like being a mom, like every scheduling. Every moms are just trying to keep them alive. Yeah, like it yeah. is so hard. And they're like, just trying to make you die. So. <laughs> So, so try to be easy on your friend too and ask her maybe there, she needs some help. Maybe you could help in some way. I say give yeah. more. Listen, if my kid said to my best friend, I want you to drink that and die, yeah, I would have a very stern talking to with my kid. But what? But do, would I think, oh no, my child's a sociopath that wants my best friend to die? Not really. What if it happens three times? What if it happens three times, we're in a bit of a different zone. Yeah, so we'll see, you All know. Right. Good we'll luck. See. We'll see. More will be revealed. Good luck. And will you send us some of these tortillas? And yeah, yeah, we, we yeah, we have a tortilla company up here. I, I would love to. I would Ooh, send me I'll, some tortillas. I'll, yeah. Maybe Actually, organic Wisconsin corn. That's the only ingredient. Oh, I want it. I want it. And Heidi, you are even more gorgeous than our podcast producer's gold, golden doodle. That is oh. true. That is true. I mean, she, the, the dog is quite a looker, but we believe that the tortilla queen of Madison, Wisconsin is even more beautiful. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, Thank good you luck. So much. I appreciate it and love love the feedback and I'll be patient with my friend. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're awesome. She was cool. Handmade tor- tortillas are really awesome. Handmade tortillas go such a long way. Yes. <laughs> also, it like th- it is hard that every child develops differently and you 100% have friends with a 3-year-old who is a talk show host and then you have friends <laughs> who have a 3-year-old who's just like that's not what I do. I am yeah. I'm not engaging with you. Uh, Kara, I'm, a, I'm a dud. Kara and Jared's son, I, we went to the pool together and he just spent all of his time looking at wet concrete. And <laughs> I was just like, what a fascinating creature. Do you think our kid is a um, talk show host? A, like a, a boring person because she didn't talk to you? No, no, no. Like, I really She's was... just like, it does take... I, kids, all of a sudden, they're... That is so funny. Annoying children who ask a million questions a second, like... They will all of a sudden get shy. Well, and there's also just the thing of like, to you guys, I am a regular presence in your life. And I have shown up four times at vast distances within her tiny life. She doesn't have any context for who or what I am. And like, to me, the exciting moment was when she came, you were like, you had stepped away and she came performative, started performatively coloring. And it was like, oh, she, she wants engagement, but she doesn't know quite what's going on. And she wants you to ask her she what she's coloring. I mean, it's so funny to me, though, that you were like, we were telling uh, uh, Heidi, you just got to like not even care about this. It's just a four year old. And then guy was like, you know, some people's kids are, you know, just not that engaging. And you were like, is that our daughter that you're talking about? 
<laughs> it's like the minute it's about no, us. No, but I see that she does that but same yes. thing. Also, it's like they're small children. Like I am in no way saying that Oski Logan is not a fascinating human being. <laughs> I spent a lot of time looking at wet concrete with him. I was like, what's to know? <laughs> what's in there, little man? I yeah. wish I had a guy like you coming around when I was little. No one, ever, I, no one cool is ever talking to me. My mom's best friend used to do the. Uh, she was the. Um, she was the auntie best best friend, so she uh, would be. She was her role. She thought was to like keep me in line. Yes, and I fucking hated it. Yeah. I mean, I she would always be like, "Don't talk to your mother like that. Don't sit there. Sit your down." Your mom's be- friend said that to you. Yes, Jean, who you've met, and I always I was so resentful towards her, and in the end. I, I still am resentful towards her about it, but I love her. It's yeah. like I grew up and I was like, well, That's that was a weird a, take. A weird take, but I still love her. Like in the end, yes. you bring her the tortillas or you it's hey, vinegar you know or, or honey, you'll still. Better than yeah. molesting. Yes, she didn't. You know what? I always said, I always said the greatest thing about my mom's best friend was that she never molested me. <laughs> I told you my friend. You used to get dropped <laughs> off at a woman, and the woman was like, show me your banana. Oh, no. And then he told his mom, and she didn't believe him, but she was like, okay, well, I guess she can't babysit you. That was very, that's hard <laughs> 80s parenting right I know. there. Oh, my God. Where your, your child is like, I'm being abused, and you're like, mm, I need a clearer signal than that. <laughs> but she's free until seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do another call. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You are wearing a monochromatic beautiful pair of orange pants and a beautiful orange turtleneck you have never looked so good what is your secret i just got these uh clothes at marine layer marine layer rules i got a puffy coat it keeps me so warm it's so light it's so nice and i'm wearing a pair of my brand new boxer briefs they feel like silk it's marine layer the san francisco based brand i think you're gonna like it they have sweaters tees over shirts beanies i got this very cute Puffer jacket. Yeah, they got this like vintage inspired kind of look. It's like kind of ski inspired. Yeah, it kind of looks like you're skiing in the 70s. I mean, I love it. And it's from the Bay. What more do you want? The best part is they have free shipping and returns for an entire year. No questions asked. Just make sure to get your order in by December 18th to get it before Christmas. So get those gifts. Get people some cute. Look them. Get your friends looking like they're going on a Swiss holiday somewhere. Or a San Francisco Swiss holiday. We can all admit great gifts are hard to find, but you don't have to look any further. Just go to Marine Layer. For a limited time, get 15% off at marinelayer.com slash honeymoon15. That's marinelayer.com slash honeymoon15. 15 for 15 percent off your entire order saving your closet one shirt at a time hey tosh yeah i have a growth i want to show you can you help mm, can, may i direct you to one of my favorite apps zocdoc i do like zocdoc what that, it do for you thousands of medical professionals on zocdoc are there to help you they listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. And they make it so easy. You can look up doctors in whatever specialty you need, and they will tell you where the doctors are, when their appointments are available. Sometimes they're available the same day or the next day. They tell you who takes your insurance and who doesn't. It's super awesome. When you find the right doctor, you can feel it. You feel heard and at ease. And on ZocDoc, you can sometimes you don't have to go to these places. Do a video visit? Video visits. Moshe's been dealing with his ear. I'm like... Go to ZocDoc. I can't do a video visit for that ear. I tried once and it didn't make a lot of sense. I just kept saying, what? So I went to one in person. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. That's ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash honeymoon. Honeymoon, sockdoc.com slash honeymoon. Many available within 24 hours. Was everything Your okay? mom just texted me. Do you want to keep darling dog, Natasha? My mom just texted me. Can I see a picture of your banana? <laughs> and <laughs> that, I don't know why she said that, but I'm feeling uncomfortable. I'm golden doodles saying, are really attractive dogs. I don't think so. Is that what you really? have a golden doodle? It's a straight up purebred oh. poodle. I don't know what you're what we're I talking about. I thought it about. was a golden doodle. No, it's a it's a golden poodle. All <laughs> right, we're gonna call Elise in Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh's one of those places I like to play. I'm bored when I'm there. <laughs> and I'm mad at the name of the club. What is it? Charlie Goodnights? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know he's a good guy. Well, it's it's always a like great crowds, but then it's like, what's happening in Raleigh? I don't know. I wanna know. Wait. 
Wait, I think Raleigh had like a music scene or something. Um, I don't know. I don't have any Raleigh trivia. Guy? Um, uh, Jewish mayor in the 80s? Very cool. I do like that. Elise. 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 Hello, Elise. How are you? Hello. How are you guys? We're wonderful. It's Natasha, Moshe, and our great friend, Guy Branham. Hello. What's going on, Elise? How can we help? So um, basically, I have a coworker who I'm pretty close friends with. And for the last year, our desks have been directly next to each other. Um, and I honestly don't know how somebody can make so much noise Ugh. when they eat. It's causing me so much distress. And I know I can't be the only one in the office. But I feel like I've exhausted all my options. What? Which ones have you exhausted? Um, mainly passive aggressive ones, mm. just like sharply looking at her every time she eats <laughs> and, um, like maybe getting up and leaving, but I basically need to know at this point when, uh -oh. I'm on pins and needles here. I gotta say right now though, I hate how everyone eats. Uh, every, everyone? Including, Not including you. Including me? Including my kid. Mm. Including... Today, our two friends were over. I was like, I can't listen to them eat. Mm. I'm just like, it's endless, I think. I, I think maybe it's the pandemic. Am I crazy? Well, to I Natasha's point from earlier, like perhaps the fault is not the noise of eating. It is a capitalist system that forces people into <laughs> pens where they are stuck eating. Yeah, why are we next to each other? Yeah. With our desks connected. The billionaires, connected. the billionaires, they it's did true. it. true. Uh, yeah, a loud eater. I mean... Okay, Elise. An annoying eater. What are we talking about here? And you does anything besides the eating annoy you? Um, not necessarily. It was when she whipped out a bag of big league chew this morning <laughs> that I knew that this was a to eat. Whoa, that's that legit. legit. Are we talking about smacking? <laughs> yeah. We're talking about smacking or slurping or ch chomping or everything. I've had friends ask me to I'm not <laughs> chew gum with them at a movie. Mm. I mean, yeah, I understand that. That's like at a movie. Um, but like she managed to make like macaroni and cheese like sound terrible. Is like it, is I it just open I don't mouth? know whether or not like open mouth. It's everything. I I don't know what the issue could be or how I could help her. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I need to come up with a way that doesn't embarrass her or me or anybody else in the office. But there's, there's no work kitchen. There's you guys only have a half hour. There's nowhere outside you could go. For it's lunch. a pretty casual work environment uh -huh. yeah so like people kind of eat all throughout the day it's, okay it's mm -hmm. not like a strict so she's able to actually regurgitate her fourth stomach kind of at any time <laughs> and chew that cud i this is a toughie <laughs> and you're not willing to say hey just so you know oh, that's a rough one well i'm just curious like there's no world in which you, you're willing to not be passive aggressive and just say hey just so you know like you you're a little bit of a loud eater and like it kind of like is there any way you could eat in the lunchroom instead uh, you're not willing to go th do that i'm not really willing to leave like my monitor and my setup but i've also come to now think of it it might be like a me issue because about a month ago she i was like doing my passive aggressive looks at her and she was like i'm just, like isn't this like chewing bothering you and mm. I got so frozen in the moment. And I also didn't want to be the asshole in the office in front of everybody that I said no. And oh. now I well, well, God. well, no. Elise. <laughs> you were presented with the opportunity to solve your problem. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. But then I would have to be that person. Yeah, and, but I, you and I don't are, have to be Elise. Have to leave every time Instead, at lunch. you're a different person. But you are that person, though. Like... Oh. Now you're a person who gives random dirty looks for no reason yeah. whatsoever. It's like, is this bothering you? No, I'm just kind of doing this generally. I just have a twist. I mean, I'm a huge fan of pretending like I'm talking to someone every time I pass anyone on my headphones. Yeah. Can you put like, Air AirPods like in? There's gotta they be... do cause cancer, but can you put those or, in? Or maybe get some really cool headphones or something that you could just like you know, for two or three hours, do your own thing? Or do you have to be engaged in your job? It's it's different every day. So I've done the headphone thing. I also feel like I have to be the martyr for everybody else because I know nobody's saying anything, but we all must be suffering. Oh, you oh. think it's more than you are suffering? 
Yeah. But wait, okay. what do you yeah. mean the martyr? You you must suffer through her chomping because others can hear it too? Like, I need to be the one to end this for everybody. But you could have and didn't. She said, hello, <laughs> is the issue this specific thing that you've been thinking about for three months? And you were like, it is not that thing. It is not that. And now how do you do it? The other day when I said it wasn't, it is? I mean, I, I was going to pitch that you either came in on a Monday with a well-produced story about having to deal with a very, like being at a wedding and somebody ate so gross and I hated listening to it <laughs> or like passing around a clip of something so that it could be a talking point so that this person would be alerted to it. But we've already passed that. She's already oh, like asked, hey, is my slurping bothersome? And you, you said, said no. no. <laughs> so like this is either going to require a direct conversation or here's what I'm going to pitch. You get yourself a little webcam. There have got to be men who are into this. Mm -hmm. A woman eating real sloppy, real messy. Oh, you're saying make some, mo make, some secondary make income. Make some money off of this, some <laughs> passive income off of an OnlyFans. But then, the, then problem, the problem with that is that you're saying stream this woman eating and she makes the money. Yes, you make the money and then there comes the point in time when your coworker is like, oh my God, have you been making money off of me eating? And then you're like, here's our opportunity to talk about this. Oh, she, she, she forces the issue by doing something unethical for them to have a second conversation about the eating. Yes. That is a, actually a great and a brilliant plan. I was going to suggest, but you know what will happen? What? The woman will say, I'm sorry, are you live streaming my eating and making secondary income on my sloppy chomping eating? And, uh, and Elise will say, no. And then <laughs> and th th we'll be back to square one. At least, what you, about I'll, this? I'll, I'll tell you what I would do. Yes, if what would I, you do? If I was in your position, and Moshe will probably disagree, but I would talk to her and I would say, listen, I have a problem. My husband's driving me fucking crazy. And like, I just cannot hear people eating right now. It's like stressing me out. I like it's, that. It's like, I like that. It's, it's like, it's, it's just so much for me right now. It's, but anyway, like, can we just have like a time that you're eating? And then I'm just going to like, go away i like that you know like it, it's a little bit of a lie though. i would i would take the lie a little and, further and then you just like are you're so put upon and it has nothing to do with her but it's from your fucking annoying husband. but what is your her husband or doing her exactly you just it doesn't think matter you're men like, are bad generally yeah and you're so, just like i'm just oh, like having this like this this issue with but like, what what's the connection it's my uh, problem if, if she presses about it uh, then you just start crying right uh. you just, <laughs> yes yes i'm okay with that yes right. and so then you can say like i so can't I, even get into it right now but it's just it's somehow no, but you're connected like, to eating but you're milk. like and I've, I've, i'm having to have this conversation with like three of my friends right now but i'm just like wondering like i know i seem crazy but like like for eating like from like 12 like and you can kind of know what her what schedule she, is like 12 to 3 is that kind of like the zone you know because our desks are so close to each other like what is that what what are the billionaires doing oh. like what are the people at the captains of industry are marvel making forget have about to it smell each other's farts all day long like don't you think that's crazy you know, and, and I just feel like there's a little bit of a logic hole. I like Guy's suggestion that you just begin weeping if, if it's pushed back on at all. But all this woman has to do is say, oh, totally. Wait, what does me eating have to do with your husband? He, his eating's annoying. So uh, that's what it's got to be. I have so many friends who have bad eating habits that this is this would not be a hard lie for me. I have, I, I really like Natasha's idea, but at least you have an extra $12,000. <laughs> this is a good question. Yeah. No, but the OnlyFans thing is a little appealing. Right, that's, that's, that's a way yeah. of getting $12,000. But here, if you have an extra $12,000, <laughs> you just go to your coworker on Monday and you're like, oh my God, Michelle, you won a workplace a workplace raffle that no one knew about <laughs> to go to Japan for geisha training. And then you send her to Japan for geisha this training. Is... She learns the makeup. She learns how to play the music. That's all instruments. it costs is 12 grand. I'm going but with my daughter. I'd when love you to go. Don't she, bring our child. Then she learns how to eat tofu without smudging her makeup and being silent. And then, you know, this she's is got a roundabout way. Yeah. Of training her to eat quietly by training her the ancient art of the uh, burlesque of Japan. Yes. Are you uh -huh. kidding me that I could go do geisha training for twelve grand? I, I just made that I up. Think oh I my god! Because I was like, oh, that would be. I could do my next special. <laughs> <laughs> and and by the way, our now our listeners are going. Okay, so 
Natasha for twelve thousand dollars. Natasha was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? It's a mere twelve thousand dollars for geisha training. To why fly that's to Japan? why that's nothing at all. No, just to fly to Japan and learn the art of something passed down from like generations. Now, if you're not willing to do what for Natasha months, said, I don't know. They put you up. That seems like a good deal. Uh, here's my se- my coward's option. I think Natasha's option is the courage option, which is that you say, "God, my husband and I got into this fucking weird fight." About his eating and I, it's just. It's I just have two friends who who eat so poorly in front of me that like I'm just like so ready to like talk about this. So yeah. That, so you'd have to kind of like come up with a narrative. Yeah. If you can't do that, I would suggest going on to eBay and buying an iPod Nano if they still have them. You know, find yourself an old iPod Nano and then uh, put onto that iPod Nano one. Tr- one song only if they can if you're even still able to put a song onto an iPod <laughs> Nano at this point and it's white noise and just have a set just have a headphone plugged into it literally playing your entire shift 8 hours of white noise and it's sitting there on your desk headphones at the ready white noise the minute you she's see she's got to do zoom calls the minute though. you see Diane wa- she's not eating during a zoom call the minute you see Diane walking towards the desk you fucking pop those bad boys on and you just wait until she's done eating and then you pop them off i have another another idea what do you got this one's really controversial though okay you could start a text thread with everyone else in the office with updates of her food because then it would be great fun. That's my greatest fear. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you could like make jokes about like, okay, here we are coming in <sighs> for the soup. Well, Guy's like, back and guess what? It's red pigment again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Mosh, do you want to tell him about... Um... About what? Oh, we can do that. Yeah. You know what's funny? Uh, Elise, you'll like this and Guy, you'll love it. We have a... We have a, a couples counselor that we see on zoom at lunchtime he's great uh i wouldn't say at lunchtime i would say at, at the hour after lunchtime he's great he he's awesome in every way wise a rabbi emeritus he eats 100 percent of our sessions courses oh, i'm wow. talking soup starts with twizzlers twizzlers Big gulps. I mean, it is relentless. Ice cream for dessert. I mean, it's <laughs> relentless and it's demonstrative. But it, it doesn't annoy me because Moshe and I, like, it kind of brings it, us closer, which is good because yeah. couples therapy, maybe that was the point. When we're tense, <laughs> we can always, like, when we're tense about what we're talking about and he starts chomping away at, like, ramen, I can always squeeze Natasha's leg and it's a thing that we, we have together. That's interesting. What if he's doing it on purpose? What if, he's pur- God. what if he's purging after <laughs> every so session? Smart. He's just got a, a vomit bucket. He's like, I hate eating every hour, but I've got to. Okay, I want to say this to you, though, Elise. When I was in college, I had a professor who had a French bob, and every time she would make a point, she would bob her head forward, <laughs> and her bob would come oh, forward, yeah. and I fucking hated it. I want one of those. And I enjoyed nothing about the class. Yes. And then years later, I was listening to um, a lecture, because that's what I do for fun. And I was like, this woman is so smart. Who is she? And I realized it was the professor I had had, and I hadn't <laughs> been able to enjoy her because of her French bob and her neck bobbing. <laughs> And like, this could be a wonderful person in your life yeah. if you just find the way of not having to engage with the thing that's annoying. Oh, wisdom from the uh, from Guy Branham. I, we could leave it at that. From that the that, lower depth. That, is, mean, pre- that is pretty good right there. Yes, you might be. Yeah, I love it. I can't add anything to that. That's so, great. And also, whatever is the, spoke the most true to you, I think, honey. Yeah. It, whether, it, whether it be geisha training or just practicing acceptance for your coworker. And also just really quickly if you do go by my my advice, I don't think she should say I was lying that it doesn't bother me. Okay. That stuff is always too much for me for a work situation. You know, it's like, "Oh, did I say that?" I don't. If if she says like, "Oh, I thought I said I asked you if it bothered you." I mean, you're just trying to make her like a skosh more self-conscious mm-hmm. of her eating. Because if you can say something to make her just like slightly more aware, it probably the whole thing will be fi- fixed. Well, I think we've changed your life, Elise. I got to be honest. I think we've done the the Lord's work here. I think so. Which um, one do you go, Which one are you uh, leaning towards? Well, the OnlyFans was enticing for monetary reasons, um, but. I think I'm going to try to bring it up again and uh, mm. like blame it on somebody else. Way That sounds very on brand for me. Mm. To <laughs> say that somebody else you is. found your people. Here. Yeah. And get your emotion going too. like, yeah. like I have these two friends. I've been friends with them forever. And they, I, when I ate with them, I was like, whoa, like he's like licking each finger. Like, whoa, like this is like the slurping. Like it was just a lot. And what? I was like, 
What? What's the Hollywood thing that they make a- actors cry with? My my oh um, a menthol stick. Yeah. Get one of those. You can pre-cry a little bit and just go. Can I talk to you for a second? I am going <laughs> through something so crazy, and this is going to sound insane to you. It, 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 it obviously because it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with my asshole husband. He's always like. And wait till you get a husband. Just even the way they hold their silverware starts to drive you into like yeah, a tizzy. I know it's crazy. Wait till you get a wife. The way she <laughs> will uh, <laughs> sort of analyze every single behavior you have but for how annoying it is. But or here's isn't the it? thing: like, it, it, guy is right. Like, why are they having to connect a desk? Like, that's fucking up these two people having to eat you know 17 meals a week together that is very weird like have a little privacy and maybe that's something to go to the higher ups about like hey can we have some more like a lot of time like you know like let's get these hours down let's get these breaks more regimen at chelsea lately heather mcdonald and i ate every lunch in the same room together and it was just a hard situation of she would just tell me if something i did annoyed her (laughs) <laughs> but you guys are like friends for life because of that. Yes, absolutely. So that is kind of cool, you know, like what Guy is saying. It's like, you know, the the closeness is interesting, but at the same time, it's like, what the fuck? What do they want from us? Elise, you've got your mission. Come up with a good lie. Let us know how it goes. We would love to know an update on this situation. Good luck, honey. Thank you. Bye. You're the best. Bye. Well, I You're like the best. You really think she's the best, honey? I was just trying to leave her with a little positive, you know, a little a push of positivity, yeah. you know? She ain't picking fights with four-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> that was what was so funny. It's the first woman's countenance was so positive and loving. And then the reaction to this four-year-old was so, like, out of, out of it whack. It is hard, but it's it like, is. I just, I, I really think, like, ignoring people more. Yeah. That seems like that was the advice we gave all episode long. Um, speaking of ignoring people more, I'm going to start ignoring you, too, by leaving this podcast. Guy, it was great to see you. Guy, I'll, you're so funny. It's ne- lovely to see you guys. I'll never it's forgive always you. Always a good time. I'll never forgive you for saying you would side with Natasha in the divorce. Uh, but that's okay. I, I, yeah, I, I've come to expect it. Natasha? You can still text him. Yeah, yeah. He said we'd still be in touch, but he's gonna. he knows where his bread is buttered. <laughs> Um, he knows where his duck oh. pigments are held. And Guy doesn't have any upcoming dates right now. He's a great stand-up. You should definitely see him. But I could promote something because Guy's coming to the San Francisco Sketch Fest on February the 3rd, uh, Saturday. Wait, I want to come to this. You want to come? Hosting? Guy's going to be one of the six moderators who is moderating my book launch event at the San Francisco <gasps> oh, Sketch Fest. Oh, I should Fest. be there, honey. You should have given me these dates. Oh, come on up. You're welcome to come. But it's going to no be great. But no meals. I don't want to see you eat. We are going to do, do a meal, actually. I'm taking everybody to Kolkari. Oh. <gasps> Right oh, before. nice. Uh, have I not, did I not mention that? You Jeff? did not mention that. Can you well, afford to take me and our kid? Too? Yeah, you guys can come along as well. It's going to be a great night. W. Kamau Bell will be there. DJ Demers will be there. Ali McCoskey will be there. Um, the Burning Man person, TBD. You had me Sunshine at Jones. DJ. Yeah, Sunshine Jones will be there. I'm I excited. I don't know who that is. He is a, a, he's an electronic musician of some repute. All right. Well, Guy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, I, I love you. I love, I love both we of you. We love you. I love you guys. Okay, thank you.